Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçev from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn about the sweep modifier. Uh, sweep modifier helps us create thicknesses like we did in the uh, enable render, enable in viewport uh, ticks like this. But this time we can create custom, uh, first more complex cross sections and then I'm going to show you how to create custom cross sections. By cross section, I mean this circle in here. Okay, uh, if you think about this, uh, what we do in here is we create the circle and then repeat it along the way. And then when a turn comes, it turns and uh, stays normal to the path, and it completes the path. Then creates this shape. Now I'm going to show you how to create different shapes than a circle or a rectangle. Let's apply the sweep modifier on top of the uh, path we have and now you see that we have an L-shaped section in here uh, which is called angle in uh, in the sweep modifier and you can choose any other shape from here in the list and as I told you you can also create custom shapes but we will uh, talk about that later in this lesson so what uh, ready shapes we have in here uh, are angle bar a channel which is a C profile and cylinder half round pipe and you can try these out let me show these to you let me go through these tube uh, flange which is an eye profile egg ellipse and so on uh, that, that's it i guess and now what we can do is we can just change the length of this the width of this and the thickness of this from here also, we can uh, add a corner radius uh, here, as you can see, and another corner radius, which is the inner radius in here. And let's uh, play with the edge radius, which helps us with this corner radius. Of course, we can add these later on with a, an edit poly or a chamfer modifier, but we uh, it's uh, good to have these controls in here uh, so that we can easily manipulate them with just one slider. Okay, and then we can mirror the section as you can see in the X and Z plane or X and Y plane uh, uh, or both, of course. You can add offsets in the X axis, in the Y axis, and we can rotate this with an angle property in here. Okay, so you can fit this in a uh, in any corner, I guess. This is very cool. Uh, if you uh, choose to smooth the section, uh, it will help us smooth th uh, the meshes along this area. Uh, I'm going to show what smooth is uh, later on and you will understand this a little bit better but for now let's just uh, go with this and if you smooth the path it will help us smooth the path along this uh, path uh, spline we just created. Uh, if this is this has a corner I recommend you to just uh, uncheck this because then it won't smooth those corners as you can see. Okay, If you try to smooth them it looks a little bit weird in my opinion. Okay, and lastly, this is very important uh, in my opinion as well. Let's go to the front or the left view. Uh, I want to see the cross section of this. Uh, let's go to the front view. Uh, here is the cross section, as you can see. Let me hit F3. Yeah, and also make this a little bit straighter so that we can uh, see that a little better. If I go to the top view, I can just make this edge straight so that I will be able to see this from the front view and these two are aligned, these two vertices are aligned in the front wheel. Then I'm going to go to the sweep and you can see that we have this L shape in here. And now what I'm going to show you is uh, pivot alignment. Now keep the basic path or the uh, base path in mind. And what this does is it, it will make this section sit on that line uh, on all of these edges as you can see. If I just select the top left one, the L the top left part or point of the L shape will sit on the original path we drew. Okay, you can see that if I disable the disable and enable the sweep modifier, you can see that the top left corner of the L shape sits on the path. Okay. Now if I change this to bottom right, for example, you'll see that now bottom right corner sits on the line, the baseline we created. Uh, for example, if you are creating a baseboard, 
then you should, uh, I guess, select the outer bottom corner, which in this case is uh, uh, bottom left corner, uh, because it will sit on the floor or uh, inside the wall from this corner in here. Let me show that to you actually. If I create a box, let's delete that uh, basic shape we created. Let's create a box. And let's create a flat with uh, dimensions of 8 meters by 8 meters and the height should be 20 centimeters. Let's center this box. And actually let's uh, create the height with as minus 20. This will be a little bit easier. If you keep the top of the floor, let's say, aligned with the 0z uh, axis or the grid, uh, it will make things much easier because whenever you draw something new, it will uh, directly sit on the floor. So I uh, recommend you to keep this height value as uh, a negative value. Uh, that way you will keep the top face of the box aligned with the X and Y axis or grid. Okay, uh, then what I want to do is I want to create a, uh, some walls. Let's do it with uh, a rectangle. I will hit S to activate the snaps and then I have this rectangle in here. Let's add an edit spline on top of this. Select this. Create an outline, an inner outline, 20 centimeters. Then let's add an extrude. And, uh, let's set the height to 300. Okay, right now we have a flat. Let's uh, assign a gray material to this. Uh, it looks a little ridiculous right now. Let's assign this. And let's try to create a base uh, board for this flat. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a line. Uh, let's hit S and start from here and create this spline. Okay. Now we have this C shape in the inner walls, on the inner walls, like this. Now, if I apply a sweep modifier on top of this, you can see that when it adds this uh, sweep, uh, let's actually delete some of this wall to be able to see this a little bit better. I'm going to just delete these edges and let's connect these from here. And here. Okay, that way this side will be open and we will be able to see this a bit better. Now you can see that our sweep modifier exactly sits on the corner because we just chose this uh, bottom left corner um, pivot alignment option. If I just, uh, for example, select the center, you will see that it will try to keep, uh, keep the center of this line, uh, sorry, keep the center of this cross section and put it on this line in here, so it's uh, in the walls. Uh, right now, we don't want to use it like this. And if I do it like this, of course, it will go way more down. Uh, here, this line, uh, this uh, section sits on the line from upper left corner, and this should, of course, be um, bottom left corner. So right now, we have this baseboard, baseboard, and uh, it sits exactly uh, on the wall. Okay, it's a little bit tricky to use, but once you get the ho hold of it, it will be very easy, I promise. Uh, just try this out uh, a couple times, uh, a couple times, and then you will see that it uh, works. Like uh, it's really great to understand how to use this. Okay, but this is not the only uh, way to use the sweep modifier. You have these built-in sections, but also you can add some custom sections, which means that you can draw the section yourself. With a uh, with an edit spline, let's try to create that. Let's try to create this ridiculous section, for example, and try to use this as a baseboard and see what happens. Now, if I select this line spline in here, go to the sweep uh, modifier and use custom section is selected, and then let's pick this section from here, and you can see that it copies this section, puts it on the uh, beginning point of the line and again it creates these sections uh, and continuous sections and then rotates with the path and then creates this weird shape in here okay of course this 
doesn't look very useful uh, when you use a shape like this. But let's try to create a meaningful uh, baseboard uh, section and try to um, apply that to this flat we have. And right away I found uh, a shape like this. Let's actually grab this, uh, get a um, screenshot from this. Let's put it into pure ref so that we will be able to see this a little bit better. Now, I have this shape in here, the, or a couple of shapes in here. Uh, let's uh, hit Ctrl Shift A. In pure ref, this means that it's uh, always stay on top, and whenever I go to max, it won't disappear to the background. It will stay in here. Uh, it's very useful, in my opinion. Okay, so let's uh, delete uh, or get rid of this shape and uh, create a new one. Okay, now I'm going to just uh, first I'm going to input some general dimensions. Uh, let's input 20 centimeters for the height and 4 centimeters or 6 centimeters for the uh, width. And now I'm going to go ahead and grab the line tool, start from here, go all the way top. And then I'm going to hit S again to get rid of the snaps and go freestyle. Uh, let's try something like, so I'm trying to create this shape in here. Okay. Never is perfect. You always have to tweak it later on. So let's do that. I'm going to drop these down. Let's pull this out, pull this in, pull this out a little bit. Uh, this looks a little bit better, in my opinion. Okay. So let's uh, smooth these corners. Uh, actually, I'm going to go, I guess I'm going to smooth all these vertices, not this one. Right click, smooth, right click, Bezier. Uh, Bezier helps you make these finer adjustments. You can edit the handles and create more circular shapes, I guess, or more continuous shapes, or whatever you want, actually. Let's do this. And if you want to keep these corners as corners sharp and also still have the handles then you can go with uh, Bezier uh, let me show it's in here it will work in here uh, Bezier corner you can use this one as well uh, what it does is it uh, gives you a corner but uh, you, you can uh, play with the handles separately as you can see they're not tangent to each other uh, let's pull this down like this okay and it, uh, in the end, I'm going to just fill it this because uh, these type of shapes is, uh, are a little easier to create with fillet. Uh, and also, I guess we need to pull these out a little bit more. Okay. It's not a perfect match, but you can, uh, if you want to, you can um, put this background on 3ds Max and go over it as well. Uh, I'm going to show that to you, uh, how to do that in later uh, lessons. For now, let's just be satisfied with this. I guess it's a little bit thinner as well. Okay. Now let's just use custom section pick and let's pick this one. Okay. And now you can see that we have a, ba uh, a baseboard like this one. Okay. Uh, I guess we have some smoothing option. Uh, weirdness. Yeah, let's. Ah, okay, I messed up the shape. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Uh, I guess uh, by mistake I pulled this out, uh, pulled that one out. So let's redraw that part. Let's delete these. Go to the front view. I guess sometimes you uh, grab some weird snaps in 3ds Max. Uh, I guess that was the reason. Okay, now I'm going to check if this is flat. Yes, it is. And then I want to attach this to here. Uh, let's weld co the corners and then let's just smooth these out again. Okay. And also let's busy this. So I want this to be 
smooth. Uh, maybe they are welded. Let's go with smooth. Yeah. Okay. Okay. As you can see, we have uh, we got rid of that prop, and now we have a baseboard like this. Okay. A sweep is a perfect tool to create these types of things. So uh, whenever you see something like this, like piping or uh, baseboards or I know a lot of things that doesn't come uh, into my mind. Maybe window cases, door cases. You can use sweep. Just think of it. Okay. Okay. I hope this was useful for you. Uh, if you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and also you can hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. Uh, thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.